Hello my loves and welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. If we're meeting for the first time, welcome. And for those of you that are old friends and family, welcome back. As you guys can see, we are going to be diving into the full astrological breakdown of the week ahead. There are some moments of this week that look to be very promising, and then there are going to be some moments that are going to bring some challenges, especially when it comes to testing your patience and your resolve and your stubbornness and your resilience. But I always say, if you know how to work with the planets, then you can make them work for you and not against you. So go ahead and grab some water, grab some tea, grab some coffee, get cozy, and let's go ahead and dive right in. So first things first, I want to draw your attention to some transits that have already been in the works. For example, the sun. The sun represents collective consciousness. It's where the majority of our energy is focused collectively. This is in the sign of Gemini. Now, this is something that's been already in the works. It's already, we're already feeling the influence of it. How this tends to show up is it can bring agitation. It can overwhelm our senses, meaning our sights, our mind, all our touch, everything can be overwhelmed because there seems to be a lot of information coming at us at once. These can be exciting, overwhelming senses, or this could be overstimulation where you can feel overwhelmed by what's happening, especially within your head. We talked about this last week, so I really want to encourage you guys to go ahead and revisit last week's video, not to talk or to hear exclusively about this transit, but to recap and listen to all that has already unfolded, all that has already, um, all, all the energy that you've already have seen and see how it applies, but also see how you're walking into this week because it helps you to be more prepared. It helps you to understand. It also helps you to give yourself and others a whole lot of grace because these transits are very, very tricky and they're not one and done where you feel them in one day and then they dissipate. They tend to sit, they tend to, to linger, especially the larger transits, Uranus, Jupiter, Pluto, Saturn, and Neptune. So with these energies specifically, with uh, Gemini vibes here, we can feel a little overstimulated. Our attention be can be drawn in different places. This is um, a, a, a transit and a time where we don't try to make promises. We are more explorative, we're more playful, we're more curious instead of locked in and trying to force a commitment or force ourselves to show up with promises that we're making during this high energy time. Have you ever had moments in your life where you're just like on top of the world, you're able to do and accomplish a lot of things, you can feel it, your energy is surging, and then you do accomplish a lot of things, but then shortly after it kind of crashes and burns. Gemini energy, when the sun is moving through the sign of Gemini, it tends to feel like an espresso shot where when we're at our high, we're able to achieve, to accomplish, to do a lot of things, to show up for a lot of things. And we genuinely have that interest. We genuinely have that desire, but we have to pace ourselves because that surge of energy isn't going to last forever. Now that we are still in the thick and the midst of Gemini energy, we still need to pace ourselves especially when it comes to activities that we are taking, we have to give ourselves a lot of grace. We can move very quickly, but we can burn out or lose interest very quickly. So you can start a lot of projects and not have the the oomph, the energy to complete them, to follow them through. If I were you, I would ask for help. I would also start to explore uh, connections in your community people, places, things that can help you to accomplish, to achieve those tasks. Okay. Gemini is, I don't want to say selfish, but it can be very fickle, which can sh highlight a little selfish traits within us or within others. This can be frustrating if you are trying to extract like, uh, <laughs> what, am, what am I trying to say here? If you're trying to extract, um, like substance from a person or substance from a situation where it doesn't necessarily want to give that. These energies are very quick. They're very, um, they're not very long lasting and they lose, a, they lose uh, attention to things very, 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 very fast. 
And the reason why I'm hyper focusing on this Gemini energy is because the sun, as it continues to transit through the week, as it continue, as the week continues to unfold, it's going to get, hold on. <coughs> oh my God, God bless me. It's going to get uh, even closer to the square with Saturn, Saturn and Pisces. Now, this doesn't have to be a negative transit in any way, shape, or form. Again, I talked about this in the last few videos because this transit hasn't changed. It hasn't moved. Where we are told, we're being taught to follow our intuition a little stronger than ever before, especially when it comes to when we know that something isn't right for us, when we know that something isn't working out, right? The problem is, is that Saturn does give us heavy lessons. It gives us hard lessons, and that is a part of our kar karma. When I use the word karma, I'm not saying that you've done anything to deserve any type of harsh punishment or excellent reward. It's just saying that there's some lessons here in your life that you are going to have to master. It's just a part of the journey that is written for your life. Saturn transiting through Pisces is bringing those lessons to whatever Pisces rules within your astrological chart, within your natal chart, which I highly recommend that you pull that up. I love astro.com. They don't sponsor the video. I've been using them for years. They're just very, very accurate, and there's so much that you can do with, um, with uh, that website. But um, I highly recommend, too, that you look at where your intuition is strictly has been guiding you and leading you even if it completely defies your logic even if it even if you cannot see the outcome even if you cannot see where this path is going to lead you if there are feelings here of this is seriously not an energetic match for me they, these are times especially now that the sun is squaring saturn we're going to feel this a little this restriction even more it's going to be pushing your back up against a wall to be like this is what I've been avoiding. This is what I've been sensing. This is what I've been feeling. Now that I'm here, I've got to take this seriously and begin to draw my attention to healing it or to expressing it or to finding a solution or finding an answer to where is the root cause of this. This can show up in relationships. It can show up in your work life balance. It can show up in your career, your purpose. However, even though you're seeing activity and your eyes are drawn to this area of your life that can be very frustrating, it doesn't mean that there's gonna be an immediate clear answer. You still have to give yourself a lot of grace. You have to talk to the universe about it, your angels and your guides. I'm very spiritually led. So that's the first thing that I would do is go to my altar, go to my sacred space, meditate, pray on it, set intention, and allow that energy to unfold because clearly something is amiss. I also wanna to talk to you about boundaries. Pisces energy has a very tough time when it comes to boundaries. And if there are people, places, things, or a way that you move that dishonors those boundaries that are not help healthy and helpful to you, these types of transits, especially this week, are going to feel a little stronger and are going to, again, put your back against the wall to teach you that this is a boundary that cannot continue to be crossed. On the flip side, it's not this energy against you. It also may be you looking at how your energy may be impacted to others. How do you handle, how do you deal with having when things kind of overstep in you know over a place or when you want to overstep into someone else's place you may be learning um you may be learning how to work on rebuilding trust you may be working on rebuilding community you may be working on learning how to apologize you may be weren't learning how to work on better lifestyle practices because in the past how you've moved how you've operated how you've shown up for yourself for the world hasn't been the healthiest when you, when you know better, you do better. And there comes times in your life where you're in the midst of incredible, profound change and learning. And we don't expect perfection. We do expect reflection though. You know, We do hope that there is a time where you pull yourself back and you take a look and say, how, how did I contribute to this problem? And now that I see what I have done, how, how can I move differently? And doing the research and starting to explore. So that's something here I do want to talk to you and just kind of reiterate a little further that when the Sun and Saturn tend to square off with each other, your back feels like it's a, a 
against the wall and you feel pushed to have to face something to address something or it can be frustrating a limitation or a restriction becomes abundantly clear especially this week and that can be very frustrating if you are someone who says I want to go I want to continue moving forward this is how I want it to be done this is how it should be done and the universe says not on my watch not on my time I don't see that in this way and I see what's for your highest and greatest good and I don't agree so what do you do when you don't agree do you start beating yourself up Saturn can be very frustrating but it, it can also reveal how we feel about ourselves subconsciously what how our inner talk our inner dialogue when things aren't working out do you say oh my god I'm a piece of shit like everybody else could have figured this out but I couldn't it, it's starting to reveal to you how you process your how in the subconscious voices the unconscious the unconscious dialogue that you have within yourself that can be a bully to yourself that's definitely something to look out for Okay, so I wanted to start off with that transit because if you start to feel frustrated, agitated, overwhelmed, or tension within yourself, within your relationships, then you'll at least have an understanding of where it is that it's coming from and what to actively do with it. Speaking of action, I love the fact that Mercury, the planet of communication, is just newly entered into the sign <clears throat> of Taurus. Let me double check this though, because this chart looks a little cattywonkus. Oh no, it's newly entered in the sign of Gemini. I knew as I'm looking at it right here. We do have a lot of, sorry, the moon, I was looking at the moon is currently transiting through Taurus. Uranus is transiting to, through Taurus. Mercury has just recently entered into the sign of Gemini. I wanted to double check that. You guys know I have a uh, pregnancy brain is a real thing. And uh, I've been pulling charts a lot lately. As you guys know, I've been working pretty slow and steady, fortunately and unfortunately, on orders in the shop and also readings in the shop. So I've been pulling charts pretty nonstop. So um, anyway, uh, Mercury is entering into the sign of Gemini. And again, this hyperactivity, this thought process, this thinking is going to rev up. It's going to speed up. This is something that you are going to want to... Uh, Keep in mind too, again, everything that it was I said originally when I was talking about the sun, our, our center, our ego, our consciousness, collective consciousness, apply it to your mind, how you process, how you anal analyze information, the messages that it is that you hear and see, and see, hear, and feel. A lot of energy um, and people, the way that the vibes are with people right now, it does tend, the astrology chart, <laughs> the astrology charts, <laughs> the astrology charts are suggesting that collective consciousness is easily overwhelmed at the moment and um, needs a lot of patience, a lot of grace, and it isn't trying to have any type of serious, like, heavy energy right now. Now, that can be a luxury. <clears throat> that can be a privilege is to not have to deal with heavier, heavier conversations. That's just the energy of Mercury. It's It just doesn't really swim in the realms of intense uh, intense uh, moments in our lives it oftentimes tends to skirt that or it approaches heavier conflict or deeper conversations even still with levity and that can be frustrating or that can be uh, misread as someone not caring collectively this is the vibe what I would do if I were you, is I would use this time to build friendships, build connections, spend time with your neighborhood, networking. If you are someone who is career or goal oriented, there's something or an advocate, this is a wonderful time to, to use this to oftentimes maybe separate from those who don't match your goals and begin to network and brainstorm with those who do and to not expect everybody to be on that same wavelength and that same frequency. There are people who are um, like activated by Gemini energy and Gemini season and there are people who are overwhelmed and overstimulated by it easily and would rather go for a walk, recharge their batteries, play and disconnect, dissociate a little bit. So that's that's something that we need to take into consideration. I also want to say that this is a, a wonderful time in 
uh, and more lighthearted conversation. For those of you guys, guys that are downloading apps that connect you with community, that connect you with uh, friendships, networking, meeting, mixing and mingling, or even research. Some of you guys might be signing up for classes. Some of you guys might be exploring uh, different trips and travel. Also keep an eye on your conversations and relationships. If you're in a relationship right now or partnership or if you're dating, we want to bring more levity, more fun, more spontaneity into the relationship if you can. And if you're trying to address, handle, and resolve underlying deep-seated issues, the time for that is going to be later on in the week towards Sunday into next week. The reason why is because these energies right now, they need to take a break. And I'm just literally, I'm just trying to help you out because I know that some of you guys may be having to need to have like serious conversations or need to resolve some things, some conflict resolution. This just does not seem like the week for that. Next week, things can get more <clears throat> more serious, more problem solving. For right now, it just seems like people are going to need a break. They're going to need a break from the heaviness of conversations, relationships, and reality as a whole. We're going to feel this even further on uh, June 9th. I know I'm skipping ahead by a lot right now, but June 9th, the sun is going to be squaring off with Saturn. This is going to, if there's a serious conversation that needs to be had or responsibilities or things that you need to deal with, more uh, difficult, frustrating things, your goals or things like, let's say it's if you want to tackle like a major part of the house, like for me, that's my office right now. Um, especially when it comes to work, I work from home too. That around that time is where it's more like rolling your sleeves up and tackling the things that are difficult, that are frustrating, and really applying these energies, that sense of stubbornness, resilience, and persistence to powering through a difficult task that otherwise you may feel overwhelmed and frazzled by. Okay, so save those more difficult that those more difficult tasks and responsibilities toward the end of this week, Sunday and into next week, you're going to be able to have the planets working behind you to say, okay, this is the time where we're grinding, where we're churning to complete, finish this task. And we actually have the, the, the fire to fulfill it, the commitment to fulfill it. Gemini energy is more uh, interacting with uh, people, customers, clients, communication, emails, uh, things like that, a, a lot of uh, con conversing back and forth, okay? I do want to say that June 8th, I'm kind of taking my steps back because taking steps backwards, June 8th, this is when Venus, the planet of love and relationships, is going to be squaring off with Saturn. Again, this is going to create some tension when it comes to love relationships, Sometimes the tension is good because there's a, there's clearly a chemistry there that's happening between you and someone else. Other times it can start to highlight parts of the re a relationship or a connection within yourself where you feel disconnected, you feel separate, you don't feel attached, you don't feel warmth, you don't feel, I don't want to say attraction, but that spark is being challenged right now. So that's also something, even though these transits are are going to be exact, this transit is going to be exact June 8th, we're going to be feeling this, this the half, half of the week into the weekend. So keep an eye out for that. This can create some tension, not just in romantic relationships, but even friendships. Also, it can stress and create tension within your finances and your spending where a purchase in the past kind of comes back up and you're just like, oh, I don't know if I, that was the smartest <laughs> choice for me. And they may have like buyer's remorse or regret. You wish that you could have put that money um, elsewhere or done something else with that money. There will be, there will come a time and a place later on. This, all, all of these transits are literally this week. They're really trying to teach us lessons about how we show up the ways that we show up and any things that we need to tweak. And in that, it's more about asking questions instead of self-punishing, self-sabotaging, and beating yourself up for what you did then. You know what I mean? Half of you guys, more than half of you guys, your intentions are not in negative places. You're learning, you're growing, and you're trying to do the best that you can. So with that, you know, it, there has to be some grace being given to the situation. I really, 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 and I'm going to have a whole video about this. I really want to talk to you about the new moon in Gemini. It's going to be June 6, 8.38 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm going to have a whole video up for that, so make sure that you're subscribed. 
um, to the YouTube channel, this energy right here <laughs> is going is going to be a blessing in disguise. I know I've had a friend recently say to me, like, Jess, you know, how do you use the Gemini? How do you use Gemini New Moon? I don't really vibe with Gemini energy. I understand that. Personally speaking, I don't always go along with what I typically don't follow the rules of astrology. I'm more about intention, magic, and following my intuition. Astrology helps to explain what is happening around me. However, I don't re I don't um, say that, okay, the new moon is happening sign of Gemini, so let me go ahead and set the intention for networking, my brother, sister relationships, for neighborhood stuff, or friendships like community. However, you can follow that to a T. I really think that the Gemini, the overarching energy of Gemini, you can use it to manifest whatever you wish, whatever you want. However, I would sprinkle in some levity, some joy, some playfulness, and good information, good messages, good like things to reassure you and to support you as you move through, move on with this year and the years to come. One new moon. One, one new moon or full moon, in my opinion, I've seen it. It can change your life forever, depending on what it is that you're setting intention for. Don't limit yourself to what that new moon represents. However, you can use that in order to see what the universe does have planned for your life. But don't let that stop you from manifesting, from setting intention. I will have a full video on that. I do want to say in this, in this video, though, however, the new moon is going to be again June 6th at 8.38 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. You don't have to be working your magic or setting intention exactly at that time. Typically, I work in the afternoon. Sometimes during the day. Lately, things have kind of changed in my in my schedule, my routine as of late. But I'm here for it. I'm okay with that. Um, but for the most part, again, set intention for what is that you want. And then when we break down the new moon in Gemini, we'll be able to see exactly what does Gemini rule within your chart? How is this energy going to unfold? What is that you can expect? But still fold your intentions, your prayers, your your petitions into that so that that is being um, manifesting for you as well. I do wanna say a few last messages here. Try to pace yourself, right? If you guys are in this season right now looking at the chart, this can be very overwhelming. If you're feeling like you don't know what to do, every step is significant and every every time when you decide, okay, I'm feeling the need to change, that's a new opportunity, okay? The other thing that I want to say to you guys is trust your heart. Trust your heart. If something feels off, it doesn't mean that there needs to be some direct active shift in that. Just kind of trust the vibe, back away, do what's in your best interest. And when it comes to taking, um, when it comes to these major steps here in your life that you're being called to take, give yourself a lot of breaks. And again, a small step that you take, even a small step is still action and propels you forward and makes a difference. So don't try to overwhelm yourself with the entirety of the journey. Just take those baby steps every day. It does make a difference. Okay. I'm going to continue shuffling. Well, I'm going to start shuffling for Bahati Love Notes about this um, week, for this week. I'll link that down below. Bahati Love Notes is a reading um, subscription for those, a small group. We're gonna be talking about that as well as we're going to be following up with a relationship reading that we did last Bahati Love Note reading. So if you would like to carry on with this reading, I will link that down below for that full reading, just energe energetically d downloads, et cetera, et cetera etc etc for everyone else please make sure that you are subscribed turn on your notifications and i will see you guys in the next one bye